Hi, I'm Ellen, and welcome to day 23 of Vlog Every Day in April. Today's topic is etheric chords. What are etheric chords? Etheric chords are, well, they're these thin silver chords, when healthy, <laughs> that attach us to or connect us to anyone with whom we're in relationship, and also situations. And also, I'm shown sometimes sites, meaning buildings, places. Okay? So, how do these etheric chords develop? Pardon the phone in the background. <laughs> these etheric chords develop over time as we are in connection with people and places. Now, over time is a definitely a loose term because we're born with an etheric cord to our mother and to our father and to our siblings, if there are any. They're showing me also any fur babies. <laughs> and yet they develop with other people as we connect with them. So aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins, and then friends, teachers, employers. Now, beyond that, we can also develop etheric chords between people that we have interactions with anywhere out in the world. The clerk at the grocery store, the gas station attendant, a flight attendant, a waitress, the concierge at a hotel. So considering that, imagine then the array of chords we all possess. And by the way, that's not even speaking to spaces and places. The homes in which we've lived, our favorite park, our favorite bench at the ocean. Oh, they're showing me actually even cars. So that's really interesting. Anything that we form an attachment to, we can create an etheric connection with. And while that makes sense and certainly is reasonable, it can happen that these healthy etheric chords that are formed when we make these connections can become unhealthy. That happens when a relationship breaks up. Let's say a girlfriend and boyfriend. So that relationship ends and it doesn't end well. That etheric cord is no longer a healthy cord because it's holding the energy that was last transmitted through it. Let's say we have an employer who is just awful. Same thing. Now, let's say that we have a run-in with someone we've never met before and the interaction is not in our best interest. Unfortunately, there is an etheric cord created there too because of the interaction, and yet that one is basically born unhealthy. Okay? What do we do about that? What do we do about those etheric attachments that are actually creating disharmony? They need to be cut and or healed. So. Let's start with the cut part because that's a lot more simple, I guess. If it's obvious that an interaction has been pretty swift, even if it is profound, and isn't something that's going to continue, then cutting the cord is probably the way to go there's no need to address healing it. There was nothing to heal. So 
the way the cord is cut is snip snip. <laughs> yeah, I, I do this only because I work in a very shamanic way with energy work and so employing tools and yes, my my hands can actually become etheric scissors. And so identifying where that cord comes in, in this case, I don't know what this is from, but I'm feeling a cord here on myself. And it's something that apparently I'm allowed to cut. So having identified that, I intentionally bring those scissors and then cut that cord. And now what I'm going to do is apply light there. So bringing source light through me and healing that wound because it, it is in a sense a wound. Yeah, and so that feels like it's sealed. And then fully with intention and clairvoyantly, I envision that strand of etheric cord being evacuated from my energy field and then my energy field being sealed where that etheric cord exited so that it's effectively sealed away from me. It's no longer something I need. Now, let's say that it's a situation where there has been a long-term relationship that came to an end and it wasn't pretty. And in this case, just cutting that cord is unlikely to be wholly helpful. It will help in part. And yet at the same time, if there was a lot of anger or I heard distrust, general disharmony in that relationship, before we go cutting that cord, we need to heal that energy. And that's shadow work. That's interior work. That is filling pages in a journal, talking to a therapist. Whatever we need to do to get really clear about our part in the relationship, make sure that we are at peace with the ending of that relationship. And that is the work that will heal the cord, at which point we can cut the cord. I feel like it's different with places, with inanimate objects like cars that we imbue with personalities. In that case, the car itself doesn't have sentient ways. The house doesn't have sentient ways either. Okay, I was making sure, isn't that funny? I felt like I had to make sure. And so in those instances, if we had a bad experience in a house that we lived in or a house that we visited, I just heard a grave site we visited, a battleground we visited, historic sites can have a lot of energy in them then that's something too we can just snip those cords. By the way, notice that m my hand went to a different place because with human relationships, most of the etheric cords are probably going to be attached to our heart center. When it comes to, uh, I just heard special relationships, like the one that I cut that was over here, that wasn't attached to my heart center. It was affecting a different part of me. And same thing with houses, sites, inanimate objects. It's unlikely that they are going to be affecting your heart center. They're going to be attached somewhere else on your body. So be aware of that. And be aware of that. It's most likely that you'll just be able to snip it and have it done. Follow the procedure of healing where it was snipped and then no, I'm sorry I didn't, you don't need to do this you can if it feels right to you though okay and then using pure intention to push that 
snipped cord out of your energy field and then seal the edge of your field where it was evacuated. Okay, wow, anything else to say about etheric cords? Yes, okay, they're pointing me to a really important etheric cord and that's the one that attaches us to source energy. That etheric cord is always in place and it ascends out of our crown chakra and then it attaches to source energy. Now, when I made a video about grounding and shielding, the way I was shown source energy clairvoyantly was very cool. It looked like an enormous cloud and the bottom of the cloud was silver from all the etheric cords attached to it. And then as you came up to see the upper parts of the cloud, it was mostly goldish, yellowish color with white, just absolutely beautiful. So that etheric cord is always with us because we are of source and so we are always attached to source. It just feels important to point that out. They're also showing me that it actually looks more sturdy, let's say, than those etheric cords that we may develop during our human lifetimes. So that feels good. Anything else? No. So that's a brief primer on etheric cords. I'd love to know what your thought on etheric cords are. Have you needed to do any cord cutting? Do you have cord cutting to do? It might be a really interesting inquiry to make with yourself and notice where you're still holding attachments that are no longer necessary and take care of that. Free up some energy for you, okay? All right, well, until next time, you take really good care. Lots of love.